Hello and welcome to another edition of Around the Best Town. I'm your host, Woodbridge Mayor John McCormick, and today we are outside of the studio and at Woodbridge High School on our concert stage to talk about what's going to be a great summer of music in Woodbridge Township in 2023. Joining me is the um, Minister of Music, uh, the guy responsible for the majority of our concerts here, the great Bill Brandenburg. Bill, welcome. Hello, thanks. Great to be here. Every year I look forward to this show because we get to talk about everything. Yeah, it's fun. So we have a whole lot of shows. I'm going to talk to, with Bill primarily about Wednesdays and Sundays, but let me give you the quick lineup on Monday nights. Uh, Golden Oli's Monday, right here on Joseph Lewis Concert Field behind the high school and behind the health center. June 19th, Mondays, Lady Supreme does Diana Ross. The Everly set, obviously, the Everly Brothers. The Capris, Jesse Garin does Elvis. Forever Ray does Ray Charles. The Dupree's, The Happenings, Bobby Wilson was a huge hit. The Cameos, and of course, America's favorite uh, house band, The Infernos. That's our Monday night lineup. Tuesday, personally my fa favorite day, probably not yours. I think you're Wednesday. We have, uh, starting on June 20th, Starman does David Bowie. Pierre McCartney, you guess you can figure that one out. Broken Arrow does Neil Young, Best of the Eagles. The Linda Ronstadt Experience. Gypsy does Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac. Guthrie Brothers does Simon and Garfunkel. Frontiers does Journey, Beatlemania again, the ELO Tribute, Back to the Garden 1969, which does Woodstock Groups, and the B Street Band, which of course does my personal favorite of all time, Bruce Springsteen. So those kind of shows, these are the two most popular nights, the oldies and the tribute bands. Now let's get to what Bill is really, really good at. Tell me about the Wednesdays, Woodbridge Wednesdays in general. Yeah. Um the, the Wednesday series, it's most often described as eclectic, but eclectic can mean so many different things. Uh, when people ask me what the Wednesday series is about, I tell them uh, we book world-class and often award-winning acts with no musical boundaries. So there's blues, there's rock, there's country, there's jazz. It's reggae. Uh, yeah, reggae, yeah. gospel Soul. music, Latin music. Um, in any given year and in any given week, you don't know what you're going to hear next because it's going to be different from last week and it's going to be different from next week and uh, a lot of the acts uh, some are are well known like this year we have martin barr from jethro tull the guitarist from jethro tull uh, he's kicking off the series on june 28th that's the way to kick it off yeah yes uh, yes june, june but we have 21st is martin barr june 21st yes wednesday june 21st and there we're in parker press park again we're going back to parker press Park. yeah we looked at it uh, uh, saturday after the little walk we had down main street and it's coming into shape yes i was there this week too it yeah looks, it looks good but we have uh Alex Cuba, who won a Latin Grammy for Best Latin Pop Album. He also won a Latin Grammy for Best New Artist in 2015. Uh, we have uh, Darren and Brooke Aldridge, and uh, Brooke Aldridge won Best Female Vocalist at the International Bluegrass Music Awards. And I could actually go on and on. Uh, well, let's take them one at a time. Then. Yeah, let, we let can me, do, let me that. do that. We start with Martin Barr, uh, as you mentioned, and he is a draw. Having him first, we had one year we had, uh, was it... Who do we have first? You always want a good act first, because then you hand out the cards and everybody knows about the rest of the year. Right, right. So then you got this benefit concert. Explain that. June 28th, 7.30 here. June 28th, we're doing a light of day benefit concert. And I've already been asked by a bunch of people, well, if it's a free concert, how is it a benefit concert? And uh, what we're doing is we're providing the concert and we're asking people to donate or buy a 50-50 you know, at the concert. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll have a pop-up tent, and uh, we'll have people going around selling 50-50s. And who's uh, um, the beneficiary? The, uh, the Light of Day Foundation. They fight uh, for Parkinson's okay. research and ALS research. Okay. And uh, actually, the, uh, the main event for Light of Day every year is in Asbury Park, and very often Bruce Springsteen shows up at the main event. I'm not anticipating him <laughs> showing well, up. We'll give him a call. We'll see what happens. <laughs> the, the guy I'm working with could give him a call because he deals with him directly. But uh, well, tell him the mayor is one of his biggest fans. Uh, yeah, I've been to 50 shows. I'll so try to pass. 50 is not enough compared to a lot of my friends, people I know that do you know 200. But right, right. But the artists who are playing uh, are artists who uh, often play at the Light of Day shows, and they play for basically for cost. Um, they, they play for way below what their normal fee is. So who are they? Who are they so Guy Davis is one. He's a two-time Grammy nominee for uh, uh, Best Traditional Blues Album, and he's the son of Ozzie Davis and Ruby D, the two actors. Uh, he, he's one of the acts. Uh, Joe Durso, who's on the board of the Light of Day Foundation, 
uh, he's performing. Jake Thistle, the, oh. the kid we had here doing he's, the Jackson Brown show. What a what a performer! What he's, a musician! He's amazing. We have him coming know, later we'll in the summer, him, yeah. yeah, doing the Jackson Brown show. But for this benefit show, he's going to be doing his own original. He's, is he music. nineteen yet? No, he yet. just no. turned nineteen. Oh, just turned yeah, 19. like two okay. weeks ago. Yes, okay. he's a freshman at Rutgers University. Uh, he'll be part of that. Uh, also, uh, Miss Emily, who's from Canada, and she's actually won uh, the. Uh, Maple Blues Award for Best Female Artist in the okay. Blues in Canada. So she's an award-winning artist as well. And then a Jersey Shore country rock duo called Williams Honor, uh, very popular at the Jersey Shore. It's a great, so, great lineup. All of those people will be on stage together, in like in the round in chairs, and taking turns. And yeah, the one will do a song, and then another, and then another. And sometimes they'll sing with each other or play with each oh, other. Wow, that's pretty cool. So yeah, it'll be collaborative, and people are asked to donate what they can. You know, if you can donate 10 bucks, that's great. 20 right. bucks is even better. And if you can afford it and you can do 50 or 100 bucks, we'll take it. Well, for, sure. for a show like that, people should throw a few bucks in. They should. And, you know, if somebody honestly, seriously can't afford, you know, to donate worry, anything, the, show, the yeah. show is free. The, you know, everybody's welcome. Let's go through the rest of the lineup. I Island Jewel, opening yeah. at Cold Chocolate. Yeah, Elin Jewel Elin, is, uh, is an Americana country artist from uh, Idaho. And uh, we've had her here twice before in Parker Press Park. Uh, she has a guitarist named Je Jerry Miller, who's one of the best guitarists you'll ever hear anywhere. As is Martin Barr, our first show. Right, so right. We, you well, know, we've, is we've got some really serious. fine guitarists uh, coming to Parker Press Park this year. Selwyn Birchwood opening Abby Gardner. Yeah, Selwyn Birchwood is from Florida. He also won Best New Artist at the Blues Music Awards. He is a great blues guitarist as well, and, and a singer. Uh, Abby Gardner was in the band uh, Red Molly, a oh, okay. uh, very popular uh, folk trio. Bywater and, Calls, sorry, uh, opening yeah. act Phoebe Hunt? Bywater Calls, Canadian band. They were only together a few years. It's a seven-piece uh, soul, uh, blues, kind of funk band. Uh, for people who are familiar with Tedeschi Trucks Band, they're kind of in that vein. That wouldn't be me. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, very cool band. Big sound, a couple of horns, a great, great female lead singer. Jocelyn and the Sweet Compression, opening act fellow Pinans. Yes, okay. Uh, Jocelyn's from West Virginia. They are a soul and funk band, also like a seven-piece band with horns. Very funky. Um, and the fellow Pinans are from the Northwest, I think Seattle area. They're uh, kind of a folky duo, really good harmonies. A Ruth, little bit of a Celtic slant on some okay. of their stuff too. Ruthie Foster opening act, Emily Duff. Ruthie Foster, one of my favorite artists uh, from Austin, Texas. Also multiple winner of Blues Music Awards and also Grammy nominated several times. Okay. A great singer, guitarist and songwriter. She does some blues, some gospel, some soul and R&B. Uh, really talented. And uh, Emily Duff has been here several times before. Yeah, I recognize that name. Darren and Brooke Aldridge, opening act Joseph Alton Miller. Uh, Darren and Brooke Aldridge. Uh, Brooke Aldridge won Best Female Vocalist at the Bluegrass Music Awards four times. Four times That's they said serious. she is the best female singer in bluegrass in the world. <laughs> really? Yeah. And so, she's coming to Woodbridge. And she's coming to Woodbridge and uh, with, with a band. They have a four-piece band behind them. Um, Bluegrass music generally doesn't have drums. It, they're usually string bands, you know, fiddles and banjos and guitars and mandolins. Um, so, uh, yeah, she's one of the best in the world. Wow. This act, I, I, this name I recognize because he's played here before. Radney Foster, opening at Gold Pine. Radney Foster is a country singer songwriter. Uh, he has written songs for Keith Urban, for the Dixie Chicks, for Winona, for Sarah Evans. So people know his songs but they don't know him as much because the songs were hits for... Kind of like Jimmy Webb when we had him at Curtains, that I have no performing arts Same, center. Same type of thing, and Carla Bonoff, who we also right, had. Right. Everybody knows her songs from Linda Ronstadt, but you know the people who follow more closely know, oh, those are Carla Bonoff songs, and those are Jimmy Webb songs. Same thing with Radney Foster, really a, you know, a very well known as a singer-songwriter, but not as well known in the general public. Gotcha. Uh, Tammy Nielsen opening at Low Lily. Tammy Nielsen, uh, originally from Canada, lives in New Zealand for the last 15 or 20 years. Uh, she That's got to be a record for farthest to come to Woodbridge, farthest <laughs> away. Yeah, and, and she lives in New Zealand. She's here for the summer and then going back to All New right. Zealand. 
she's playing a bunch of folk festivals uh, up in Canada, and then she's working her way down here. She won in New the New Zealand Music Awards Best Country Album three times and Best Female Vocalist four times. So, and New Zealand, some people may be surprised, has a thriving country music scene. The country music is really big in Australia and in New Zealand. Oh, really? So, yeah, she, she's a big star in New Zealand. So uh, we're getting her to come here, and she is one of my favorite singers uh, in the world. She wow. is unbelievable. This one we had a couple of years ago, and I didn't know anything about it, but I was here for the show and liked it a lot. The Slambovian Circus of Dreams opening act, Denny Bonet. Uh, yes, and both of those acts are from uh, Hudson Valley, New York, and New York City. Um, they might rank as the closest, because one thing about the Wednesday series, as I said, New Zealand and Texas and Idaho. Florida. Yeah, this is I, no they, joke. They come from all over the world. Uh, they're not coming from Idaho to New Jersey to play Woodbridge. They're coming east yeah, to right, play right. New York. Now let me think. Boston. They're coming to play Woodbridge. Let me let me go with that. That's my that's my <laughs> well, story. I'm sticking to it. I take advantage of them coming for New York and Philly and saying, well, hey, while you're here for New York and Philly, why don't you pop into Woodbridge on a Wednesday? And uh, we get them for a really good price because they're already here. Yeah, they're already here. We don't have to worry about uh, travel expenses, and um, so uh, we we take advantage of we that. We do put them up for the night in we, the hotel. Yeah, yeah. We and the Hampton Inn is our go-to. In. They yeah, they give us uh, 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 you know a special price. They give us a break because we do so many, and uh, that's one of the things that we can offer the bands is hey. If you're here playing, you know, Philly sure. and New York and Boston, and you have a Wednesday off, do you want to pay for your own hotel and your own dinner and watch TV? Right, or do you right. want to come for Woodbridge, play for a little less than maybe you play, you know, get paid in New York, but we'll give you the hotel and we'll feed you dinner, and it's a good deal. So it's take a break from the schedule for one minute. How do you, do you call these ple people? Do they know to call you? Do you know to call them? How do you get somebody from Idaho and New Zealand to, <laughs> to get booked here? Who, who makes the first move? Um, yeah, that, I get asked that question a lot. People say, how do you find these bands? You know, that's a question that everybody wants to know. Um, and, you know, I always joke that there's two answers for that. One is really, really long, and the other one is really, really short. So the short one is, it's what I do. <laughs> All right. The long answer is, um, not I too long. I spend a lot of time uh, researching, you know, who's out there and who's available. People who go to a ton of concerts and know what I do are always sending me recommendations. Okay. I go to a lot of concerts myself, and I see bands and I see opening acts, and so you know, the the information coming in comes in from many different directions, and then usually I have to reach out to the agent. I, I like Tammy Nielsen from New Brunswick, I, uh, from uh, New Zealand. I love her. I go to her website and see what she's up to. Oh, she's she's in Canada this summer. Okay. Let me send an email. Any chance you're going to swing over you know, to the Northeast? And the agent will write me back and say, uh, Oh yeah, actually uh, we have a couple of offers in you know in New York and Boston. Uh, yeah, we might. You know, so we get a conversation going and. Uh, you know, once they know they're definitely coming, then we talk, you know, dates and money and can we make this work. And um, that's the way it works most of the time. Sometimes agents now, at least several times a year, uh, an agent will write to me and say, hey, I have this act coming to the Northeast for this big festival in Massachusetts. You know, do you have any interest in them for your, you know, your series? Because they know... They know of Woodbridge. They know that that we will book acts that are not necessarily ho household names and that are not necessarily, necessarily just rock acts or mainstream type of acts, that I'll book a Latin act or a jazz act or a gospel act, um, you know, uh, bands from anywhere in the world. And they know that and they'll reach out to us and say, hey, I've got this great band coming up from Colombia. Do you have any interest? And that actually happened a few years ago with El Cariba Funk. They reached out to me. Uh, from Colombia and said uh, we're coming to New York uh, in August. You know anything in, in about, your series? How about that Venezuelan act too? The one the Nella. Grammy, Nella, right, right. Yeah, she she was also a Latin Grammy winner. Right. Uh, she was here two years ago. Um, her, I saw her in uh, Weehawken. Uh, Weehawken has a series very similar to our series. It's right on the waterfront, overlooking the New York skyline. That and we can't offer. We have good views, but not yeah, quite yeah. that good. That's an exceptional uh, situation. And I saw her up there, and she was fantastic. 
and I actually met her agent that night and said, I would love her in Woodbridge. Oh, let's talk. And Good. we kept uh, kept in touch and made that happen. All right. Alex Cuba opening act, Vance Gilbert. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Latin acts, Alex Cuba is from Cuba, lives in Canada now. And I saw him at Outpost in the Burbs last year, and he was fantastic. And uh, uh, his manager is also the manager of Raul Malo. Oh, I remember we, him. Who we had last year. He, we had him a few times. We had him a he's few terrific. Times. Yeah, yeah, he's great. And from the Mavericks. Yep. Uh, great, great singer. So uh, I was talking to his manager up in Montclair last year and said, oh, this is the kind of guy that I book in Woodbridge. He'd be fantastic. So uh, we just had a little dialogue and said, okay, let's touch base in the winter when you start working on next summer. Uh, he won the Latin Grammy for Best New Latin Artist in 2015, and he won the Latin Grammy for Best Latin Pop Album in 2022, last year. Wow. And, uh, and he lives in Canada. He's also won two Juno Awards, which Juno is the Canadian Grammy Award. Okay. So he's won two Canadian Grammys and two Latin Grammys. Wow. And he's coming here for free in September. For free? Well, we're playing. We're, oh, free, yeah, yeah, free yeah, right. Free show. I'm we're, sorry. We're yeah. paying him, but it's free anybody, to the... Who's, play, who's playing for free? Yeah, free to the public. And Vance yeah. Gilbert, who's opening for him, uh, he's played here a few times before. He's a fantastic singer-songwriter and one of the funniest people you ever want to meet. In fact, he actually has toured as the opening act for George Carlin because they oh, thought well. it would be great to have somebody who's so talented but also funny to open up for a comedian. Well, if you were to get asked to come here for free, we'll pay you. <laughs> yeah. uh, two more. This one I've heard of, too. They've played here before. Screaming Orphans, opening act Sheridan Ruitin. Uh, yes. Uh, Screaming Orphans are four sisters from Donegal yep. in Ireland. Beautiful and, accents. Uh, yeah, and... Uh, they do original contemporary pop songs, maybe something like the Cranberries, but they also do traditional uh, Irish music, and they'll do a few songs in, and sing in Celtic. No, um, nothing wrong with that. I could listen to them no, all night. Uh, and they're fantastic. Their harmonies are harmonies, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And you remember they they did the national anthem a cappella. Yes, yes. Uh, when they that's were right, here, that's right. And as soon as it was, you get goosebumps. As soon as it was over, I started asking my friends with cameras, "Did you get that on tape? Did you get that on?" Right. Nobody filmed it. I did too busy. <laughs> like, uh, they were so amazed by it. Yeah. Well, and plus, you know, you ask people to stand and take off their caps. Right, so right, everybody's right. at attention. Nobody's thinking right, to videotape. Right. Well, I'll get them this year. But it was fantastic. Last act on Wednesdays all the way to September 20th, the Harlem Gospel Travelers opening act, Veronica Lewis. Uh, yes, the Harlem Gospel Travelers. We can figure out where they're from without saying, because they're from Harlem. Right. And we <laughs> figure, out what, figure out what they play. <laughs> they uh, do kind of a rockin' gospel, uh, very up-tempo, very get up and stomp your feet and clap your hands, uh, good harmonies, good lead vocals. I saw them this past year, too, and they just knocked my socks off. Wow. Uh, they were f and Veronica Lewis, uh, she's another one. She's only, I think, 19 years old. She might wow. even be 18 years old. And uh, she's kind of like Jerry Lee Lewis. She pounds that piano and wails away on old retro, you know, old-time rock and roll. Wow. But uh, really high energy, and she's a good pianist, good, good vocalist. Do the opening acts ever come back? to be a regular act? Has that ever happened? Well, uh, yeah, that's, that in theory is what we're trying to do, is you're trying to give them exposure and build an audience or, uh, around them so that they can come back eventually and either co-bill a show where there'll be two headliners. That's usually the next step. You're an I opener, you. yep. and then after you're an opener, you do a show where you do half the show with another act that's emerging, does the other half of the show, and then the next step after that is you headline a show. Gotcha. Um, we've actually had uh, acts that came here and played Parker Press Park. One is uh, Charlie Crockett from Texas, and you hope that you build an audience and then you can bring them back and maybe do them indoors and do a ticketed show because right, now right. they're popular Though We've enough. done that a couple times. We've done You're that right. several yeah. times. And, uh, and now you can sell tickets and enough people will buy tickets because they're aware of who they are now because they've seen them. Oh, that's that guy in the park. He was amazing. Well, we yeah, did we that with, with Jake Dissel. He played here at Jackson Brown. And then four or five months later in December, he's at the Avenue Performing Arts Center. Right, and we almost sold well, that show Just about out. sold out, yeah. yeah. It was a sellout, uh, you know, there's a few uh, random seats right, that right. are open, but technically I'll call that a sellout. Uh, I do too. But Charlie Crockett, that was the plan with him. Let's bring him and let people see how great he is and then bring him back maybe in, in Avenel and sell tickets for him. Right. Well, 
after he played here, he took off, he recorded a song with Willie Nelson, and earlier this year he sold out the Ryman Auditorium, which is 3,000 seats in Nashville. So that's not an Avenel Performing so Arts Center gig. He's way beyond Avenel at this point and way beyond playing here at this point. So that's happened a few times as well where right. you know we tried and they just exploded after they were here. Let's do a quick run through Sundays and I want to ask you about June 3rd. Okay. Uh, starting June 25th, Southern Steel, we know them. Their local Hank Carr from the Woodbridge Elks is their, uh, one of their managers. Uh, July 2nd, Dead Grass covers The Grateful Dead. Uh, July 9th, my favorite country band is Kinderhook. I remember that when they were Kinderhook Creek, and we used to see them in the Colonel's Garter and all that growing up. Back in the late 70s. In college. Yep. Uh, Sailing Shoes covers Little Feet. Uh, Live at the Fillmore naturally covers the Allman Brothers. Zach Brown Tribute Band. I'm not a big country band a guy, but when they first played years ago, I thought they were terrific. Great band. Yeah. And the funny thing is that Zach Brown... He's a country artist, but he also covers Metallica and Van Morrison, and he, co he does covers of a lot of not traditional country Not what you would things. think. Yeah, so there's so a lot of rock in there, Eddie too. Clendenning and the Blue Ribbon Boys, Rockabilly Elvis, so that's a rock version of Elvis Presley. He, he was actually in uh, the Broadway show, uh, the Million Dollar Quartet. He played Elvis on Broadway. Oh, wow. Uh, eight, August 13th, the band band, covering the band. Right. Love them. Levon Helms band, uh, Amy, Amy Helms' Amy dad. Helms dad, yep. Uh, Panama Dead, of course, covers New Riders of the Purple Sage. Jeff Slate's Weekend Wilburys, we can figure that one out. They cover the Traveling Wilburys. And the guy we all know and love for the last three years, Jake Dissel, Late for the Sky, featuring J Jake Dissel covering Jackson Brown. Right, and that's the Sunday lineup. We're not going to have him too much longer. He's going to be too expensive for us pretty soon. What's well, funny, uh, we had a show in Avenel yesterday, and he came to the show. Did he as, really? Yeah, to, to watch the show. I wanted to show. get there, but I couldn't. It was fantastic. That was Matthews, Ian Matthews? Ian Matthews uh, which, and, which and James got Maddock. But uh, when Jake was at the show, uh, he and I had a nice little chat before the show. Oh, good. And I said, look, you know, you got this Jackson Brown thing, and you've got your original music, which is fantastic. I love his original music. So I said, so Woodbridge has plans for you. We're going to bring you and do the Jackson Brown thing in the, in the field right. again. But we're going to bring you solo to be an opening act in Avenel to open up for an established Oh, name. good. All right. And then after that, we're going to bring you back with your band to do a co bill. Good. You, you do You're one smart. hour. You get them, yeah. You, you we'll get them get get hooked. I get them, you know, mentally locked in. Yeah, good. That, you know, we don't really have a commitment or a contract, but he knows that we have a plan for him. And he was, he thought it was great. I mean, he's a 19 year old kid, and I'm right. telling him we're going to give you this gig and Free that gig, gig yep. and then this gig. And, you know, he's going to be here this summer at the benefit show doing his original right, material exactly. and at the jackson brown show he'll be doing... woodbridge will be his home so we're we're gonna get our claws in him you know while we can and Good. when he explodes he'll be ours <laughs> so now we've got two minutes left to talk about june 3rd merrill park 12 to 10 2019 350th anniversary wonderful success two years no go no go because of COVID. last year very successful we have six bands and i'm trying to remember all six hollow molly is the first or the second one uh revolver is first revolver and then hollow molly right and then we have springsteen uh saints in the city third uh i know chicago's last chicago's the slambovian circus of dreams is no, no, fifth. moroccan the moroccan oh, sheep sorry, i'm confused the moroccan sheep are before chicago and before that is uh the b street no it's, uh saints, in the, saints city. in the city and the third band is is the one hit wonders. One hit wonders, right, right, they right. Do, uh, one they'll hits. do Brother Louis and they'll do Brandy Looking Glass, right, those kind of things. Right. The kind of act that couldn't hold a, a concert, but yet you put them in the middle of a group of bands and I think they'll be great. So yeah, well, they, they don't do a tribute because right, they don't right. do, you know, 20 songs by one band, but they do 20 songs by 20 different bands. So Revolver's out of Colonia, great local band. Hala Molly, five part harmony, country yeah. uh, kind of songs. Um, then we said, what, the. Um, our, um, then One Hit Wanderers. One Hit Wanderers. Then, then the Saints, Saints in the City. In the city. Then um, uh, Rockin', Rockin Sheepers. And the... Chicago, who played here last year and knocked the socks off everything. If you're going to do Chicago, you have to have a great guitarist, a great, great drummer, horns. great horns, and at least one great singer. They have two great singers yep. and great horns, great drummer. Yep. Great, uh, uh, they just blew everybody away. So it's 12 to 10, six bands, there will be food, there'll be uh, drinks, there'll be things for kids to do. We're going to have no coolers this year, folks. We get a lot of complaints from our vendors when people come all packed up with food and drinks and everything and don't buy anything. So if we want to make this successful, we're going to have no coolers, no outside food, no outside drinks. 
but you're getting six shows for free. So you can buy your lunch and you can yeah, buy right. a, uh, some sodas or beers or White Claws or whatever. So Contribute to the cause. Yes. I have one other thing. Make it quick. To, We've to got 30 about. seconds. Um, in uh, the end of September, October 1st, it's our oh, date. Oh, right, right. We're, we're we doing got... a new thing, the Middlesex County Jazz Festival. Right. With Perth Amboy, Metuchen, New Brunswick, Edison, and Woodbridge. We're all going to do one jazz show. Uh, Woodbridge date is Sunday, October 1st, right at Woodbridge High School Fields. Five shows and in a weekend in five it'll, different locations. It'll be five shows in five different locations on one website, on one poster. It'll be promoted as the Middlesex County Jazz Festival. Yep. We and have time to promote that, but that's going to be a good one. It'll be annual. Uh, our plan is for it to be annual and for it to grow and add other Middlesex right. County towns to it. Well, there you have it, folks. A wonderful summer of music in Woodbridge Township in 2023. Thank you to Bill Brandenburg, the conscience of music in Woodbridge Township. I always say when I introduce him that he forgot more about music than I'll ever know, and it's absolutely true. So this is going to be wonderful. We hope you join us for as many as you can. Thank you very much. <laughs>